My name is Michael Littman. I'm the chairman of the computer science department as of last July. So this is the first time I'm serving in this role. So this is all new to me. Obviously new to them. They haven't graduated before either. Um, so, so, so we're all kind of we're going to work through this together. Uh, the basic flow is going to be like this. I'm going to make some opening remarks that I've been working on. Uh, then we're going to have a presentation of the Novielli Award. We have two award winners this year. So uh, we're going to be presenting a uh, little certificate and check. And, uh, and, su and such. Then we're going to read off the list of the honor students and give them their graduation certificates from the computer science department. Then the rest of the graduating students we're going to cover. And then there'll be opportunities for photo and more food and whatnot. Um, the, so we'd like, we have nice places set up for you guys to do your photos if you'd like. You can take them anywhere you want, but we have these you know, lovely decorations. And um, there's also a, a, one of the sort of cool, it looks like you just got the Oscar kind of uh, banner things out around the corner, so you can have, have a picture in front of that as well. I assume that's the purpose. Um, we also, we, we just kind of revamped our website and we're adding things to it, so if you wouldn't mind uh, <coughs> being photographed for our website, we would love that as well. We have some release forms so that uh, to make that kind of official. Uh, so we'll have, we'll be, where they're available over there. So, so come talk to us if you're willing to do that. We might grab you as well. Um, we have uh, various bit capture devices here. There's um, audio recording, video recording, and stills. There's another video camera up there. So um, we're gonna post all that up on our website uh, after the event. So you're welcome to, to download things from there as well. Uh, I think that's the basic flow, but I do want to I do want to thank especially uh, Joanne Walsh, who's been working very hard to, to put together this event, <laughs> which, is, which is very nice for all of us. So, so I appreciate that. She's gotten a lot of help from, from other staff members as well, and Charles McGrew, who's our media guru, uh, who's doing all these. <laughs> all right. So uh, so I wanted to, I wanted to tell a little story because. It turns out I really like to talk, and um, as, chair, as chair this year, I discovered mostly I have to sit around and sign papers and meet with people one-on-one, -on -one. but this is an opportunity to actually get up in front of people and talk, so I'm going to do that, um, whether, whether you like it or not. I guess you can leave, but I, I appreciate it if you did it, because I think I try to make this interesting. So, so here's, here's the pitch I'm going to give. Uh, a few years ago, around the time that many of the students here arrived at Rutgers and started, so in 2006, I represented the computer science department at an open house for some incoming college students and their parents. So, you know, I, I wasn't chair at that time. I was just representing my lab and telling them a little bit about the computer science department. I told them about the research that my students and I are doing. I answered questions about the department. And it was, it was mostly fun and very collegial, but near the end, a skeptical man raised his eyebrows at me and said essentially, you know, if I wanted my son to learn computer science, I'd send him to tech school. But I won't, because all the jobs have been outsourced to India anyway. So I just, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to respond to that. I kind of took a beat and I thought about it for a moment and I, and I, you know, I told him, I, I respectfully disagree with you. The world of technology and ideas is changing very quickly for the foreseeable future. Talented people who know how to think about computer science are gonna be the ones who are gainfully employed. Good sir, they, we, are the ones who actually understand how things are changing and what we can do to participate in the process. You may be missing out, but I implore you to give your son the chance to contribute to the world of the future. <laughs> okay, actually I didn't say that last part. Um, I really just said the first part. But one of the reasons that I, did, I wasn't able to kind of make my case as strong as I, as I could is because I didn't have a lot of concrete examples that I could provide to really back myself up and make my case. But I really do believe that things are changing fast and the technology keeps altering the landscape of our lives in unexpected ways, and we need to be finding ways uh, to, there we go, uh, to, to stay on top of things and to really understand what's going on. So, so just to, to, to really ground this idea and bring it home, I thought I'd give you a little bit uh, of a tour of how some things have changed in just the past few years. In fact, just from the time that these folks started at Rutgers, by and large, until now. So, 2006, September. So fall 2006. Yeah, sorry guys. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll fill this in. It won't be as interesting as you might think, but it's, I try to make it interesting. All right, so uh, September 2006, just after these folks entered college, Facebook started. Now, Facebook had been limited to a few universities at that time, but in September it actually opened up to the world, and it provided an exciting new opportunity, an exciting new social networking paradigm, and now it's really just part of the way that we think about the computer world. 
In October 2006, a teenage girl committed suicide after being taunted on MySpace, and that provides an example of kind of the downside of social networking and some of the things that we have to be aware of and, and be thinking about. It didn't actually post. Did November 2006, the Wii became available. The Wii remote instantly became one of the most innovative human computer interaction devices in recent memory and really has, has, has provided all kinds of interesting opportunities for, for pushing the technology forward. December 2006, Verizon began a large-scale expansion of fiber to the home, changing expectations of what can be delivered online and in what quantity. January 2007, the first terabyte disks were announced, expanding the qu quantity of what we can store digitally. February 2007, Gmail, now a household name, first became available to the public. Now many organizations, including ours, are contemplating changing how they provide email services to their constituents based on this kind of model and how successful it's been. In March 2007, Netflix Instant Watch became available, effectively expanding our movie libraries by thousands of titles. April 2007, Intel quad-core processors became widespread, continuing the multi-core trend. Multi-core designs now dominate computer architecture research. May 2007, Google Street View launched, with implications for a host of new application possibilities and perhaps some privacy concerns. June 2007, YouTube, which had just been bought by Google for uh, $1.65 billion just a few months earlier, launched a mobile version. You can watch TV anywhere. Or actually, you can watch cats, I guess, anywhere. Uh, in Ju uh, July 2007, six months after its release, the iPhone security features were bypassed. August 2007, after only a few months online, Twitter was mentioned in a mainstream comic strip. Now, anyone without a Twitter feed looks behind the times. In related news, the Computer Science Department will be starting a Twitter feed sometime this fall. <laughs> September 2007, a, a Minneapolis woman pleaded guilty to running an underage prostitution ring through Craigslist, giving people another kind of computer virus to worry about. Uh, October 2007, Google and IBM began funding research in initiatives on cloud computing, a trend that's, uh, that's changing how software is organized. November 2007, the Kindle was released, providing a new way to distribute the written word to people. December 2007, Rock Band goes on sale, uh, resulting in new ways to think about multiplayer gaming and what it means to actually play a video game. <coughs> January 2008, GM announced that they plan to start testing driverless cars in 2015. So, and, you know, the computer scientists of the world are going to be the ones to try to make sure that that's not going to kill everybody. <laughs> February 2008, Toshiba surrendered, making, uh, ending the HD format wars, long live Blu-ray. Uh, March 2008, Hulu launched, making TV, watchable even, uh, TV watching even more flexible, because you know, we needed to spend more time in front of the tube. Uh, April 2008, HP Labs announced the development of a MemRister. I didn't know about this until I started to, to research this presentation. It's actually a fourth fundamental electronic circuit element, with resistors and capacitors and inductors and people are starting to talk about how it's going to provide entirely new kinds of circuit designs, uh, perhaps faster databases and, and different ways of, of doing artificial intelligence. Uh, May 2008, the Roadrunner supercomputer from IBM and Los Alamos National Labs was the first to reach the petaflop mark at 10 to the 15 operations per second, opening the door for a new scale of scientific simulations. June 2008, LEGO announced We Do, a USB-enabled LEGO device for teaching elementary school robotics. July 2008, Apple's App Store opened, which has been described as a bold new model for lightweight software development and distribution. So a lot of us may be writing in the, in the future, when we write our programs for other people to use, we may be distributing them through things like the App Store. August 2008, Intel and partners released the U USB 3.0 specification. It's 400 times faster than the original USB protocol. In September 2008, Skype became a part of the vernacular when Who Wants to Be a Millionaire added Skype a Friend as one of its options to contest it. <laughs> That's a verb in that sense. Uh, October 2008, the Android operating system was released as open source, providing a new platform for smartphone developers. November 2008, the Green Grid established a user-centered advisory council to steer discussions on the design and management of energy-efficient data centers. December, oh, that was December. January 2009, Intimar, that's the French Navy computer network, was one of many systems infected with the Conficker virus. Microsoft eventually offered a 
$250,000 bounty to track down those responsible. February 2009, a 14-year-old in Wisconsin was arrested for refusing to stop texting messages in school. I don't know if that's a computer science thing, but we should all be a little bit careful, I think. March 2009, Google Voice was released, and it may very well change what we think, uh, the way that we think about what a telephone number is. April 2009, Apple made DRM protection free versions of songs available in iTunes, calling into question current attempts to secure digital information. May 2009, the official White House photographer began making his photos available via Flickr. Right, so our, our government is using Flickr to let us know what's going on. June 2009, Twitter plays a highly visible role in the Iranian pro protests, intertwining political expression and digital communication. July 2009, MIT's lifelong kindergarten group launched Scratch Ed for educators using the programming language Scratch for teaching programming. August 2009, with the help of a new algorithm called Shape, scientists decoded the entire HIV-1 genome, hope hopefully opening ways of stopping the spread of AIDS and helping people who are infected. September 2009, a team of scientists claimed the $1 million Netflix prize and in the process, they've developed uh, a number of technologies, including ensemble-based technology, that's really having a huge impact on how people are thinking about automated recommendation and a lot of other statistical problems. October 2009, Windows 7 was released to the public, replacing Vista. I'm told it's uh, actually okay. <laughs> November 2009, the Pleo robotic dinosaur went back on sale after briefly becoming extinct in sort of a Jurassic Park move. Um, after uh, the originators had gone bankrupt earlier in the year, the trend toward home-based robotics is well underway. December 2009, Avatar. January 2010, ESP announced that we'll make some of its sporting broadcasts in 2010 in 3D high-definition format. February 2010, Toyota acknowledged that software problems were the cause of brake failures in some of their cars, driving home the idea that software, and good software, has real-world consequences. March 2010, Microsoft Tag Reader became available on Android phones, heralding an era in which we can click on URLs on real objects. If you haven't seen these things, you, have, you take your phone and you point it at a little picture like this that, you could, that could be in a magazine or a car or something like that, and then the, it reads that, it's actually encoding of information, and brings up the appropriate website. So this, you could very well start seeing these things everywhere. Um, April 2010, last month, it's only last month, Apple's iPad was released with the new model of perhaps changing our model of what a personal computer really is. I should have a picture of it, but I can hold one up because it's right here. <laughs> Charles has one. How cool was that? All right. So, uh, all right. So, what was that all about? <coughs> How will these developments impact our society in the long term? I have some ideas. Maybe you have some ideas. I don't claim to know all the answers. But the harder question is, this is just four years. I just picked these four years because they're the four years that these folks were in college. What are the next four years going to bring? There's no reason to think that it's not going to be just as revolutionary. So what we tried to teach all of you is that there's some fundamental concepts that underlie all these different items. So what do we do? How do we think about these things as computer scientists? We couldn't teach you each one of these things individually, but we tried to teach the underlying ideas. What do we do? Find the right model. What are the objects that make up the new application that you're trying to think about? Understand the primitive operations. What can you do to those objects? We have to think about things that way. Figure, and then third, find out the implications of composition. What is, what is it that happens when you combine these objects using the primitives to make something new? So if you can understand how this works, not only will you be able to stay on top of the changes as they happen, but you'll be one of the people at the forefront of the next big thing. So I just wanted to offer my heartiest congratulations on a job well done, and best wishes in the years to come. Thanks, guys. All right. So uh, what I'm going to do next is announce uh, Jack Novielli from the Provident Bank, CIO and Executive Vice President, who's going to be who's going to be announcing the Novielli Award. Morning. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that um, it's a great opportunity to be in front of you. Uh, I believe the first Novielli Award was issued in 2004. It's an opportunity for us to recognize um, our son who attended uh, Rutgers as part of the computer science uh, group. 
from 2000 to 2003. Uh, the Provident Bank Foundation, uh, the company I work for, helped us put together this award and this um, recognition that just keeps all of that alive for us. So it's a, it's a great opportunity to, to, to be part of this. Um, I wanted to first congratulate you all on your accomplishments. It, it's a tremendous feat to be able to be to look back on the last four years, see how the world has turned, and, and that you're going to be a part of the new evolution that's going to take place the minute that you walk out of this door. Um, we want to take uh, an opportunity to recognize two individuals. And before I do that, I just wanted to, I work for a bank, and, and that, some of that, <coughs> we were just speaking about it a minute ago. And the inspiration here is you look at the, the evolution, right? And banking, believe me, if you're a computer, computer science major, uh, is not that innovative from a technology perspective. So that's probably not where you want to go. But the challenges it brings to us is, is different. Um, we've, we've grown up in a society that's become much more convenient oriented. You know, we want things now. We want to be able to do things today. We want to be able to access whatever we want right now. The challenges that we're facing in the financial industry from a technology perspective is guarding your safety. You know, so the challenge to this, to this group is how do we allow this convenience to continue to evolve and know that we're dealing with the right people, that people aren't stealing identity, that people aren't assuming the, you know, the effect, identity of everyone else. The financial industry is struggling. You know, we almost have to take a step back and say, hey, we need to call you on the phone and listen to you. We need to mail you a piece of document that you bring back into the bank to make sure that we know who you are, because we struggle every single day to validate that the customer that's talking to us via a channel is the appropriate customer. And you work too hard for your money for it to just evaporate because someone else is, is pretending to be you. So the challenge to the group and the groups that come after you are, how do we marry those two? How do we marry the conveniences that technology brings with the protection that you deserve? And, and I don't know how you solve that. I know the government's trying to figure out how to solve that. And um, we, we deal with consequences of that on a daily basis. And anybody who's had their identity stolen understands the turmoil that that brings to you. So we, we can't give up on the conveniences. Technology is great. It, it gives us the opportunities to continue to evolve, to do the things that we need to do. But we need to bring in perspective the social ramifications of that. And, and that's, you know, I think one of the things from a computer science perspective and the people that work for me is how do you bridge the real life implications that everybody goes through with the opportunities that technology brings? And I think that's a challenge that you'll all continue to kind of work with, you know, hopefully. Um, again, congratulations to all of you. Um, it gives me great pleasure to announce that Anthony Cuso and Bradley Board are this year's recipients of the OVL Review. about our, our winners. Um, uh, Bradley Lord couldn't be here today, but uh, he's graduating with a BS in computer science and also in math. He has a perfect 4.0 GPA in his computer science courses. Uh, one, of his faculty, uh, one of the faculty members who had him in class said he was an ideal student, a mature scholar, and not only does he passionately study the course material and explore related topics on his own initiative, but he tutors his fellow students and helps convey the joy of learning to everyone around him. But, uh, but he's not here, so we don't have to clap for him at the moment. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but Anthony Cuso is here, so I want to say a few words about Anthony as well. Um, Anthony's graduating with a uh, Bachelor's of Science in Computer Science and a minor in Math. He served with distinction as a student member of our curriculum committee. So he's one of the few undergraduates who actually comes in and, and meets with faculty members and helps set direction for the department. Uh, he, he also headed up the undergrad CS organization this year. Um, as, as its leader. He also, I'm told, serves as a um, uh, student operator. And as student operator, so helps run the computer system for, uh, for the department. And uh, he was a peer leader for CS 111, so helping to educate his, his fellow students. 
uh, the, the, those who have had him, including me in class, ha have said that uh, he's great to have in class. He puts his all into everything he does, and he's just, just a pleasure to, to get a chance to work with. Very high energy, very insightful, and just a, just a great person. So in addition to the award and the nice certificate, I'm also going to give you a computer science department mug uh, on my own behalf. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, so uh, next on the agenda, now that we've done awards, is to move on to the honors track. Uh, oh. <laughs> we do have one other award that, that's, that's being given this year, the Magnuson Award, but it's gone to a junior, and she's not here either, so we'll stay, stay posted. It'll be on our department Twitter feed when that comes into being. Um, oh, there's one other thing about the honors, honors track. Oh, okay, right, so honors track, I'm not sure what that means. Um, uh, two people... Uh, Graduated on the on our honors track. That was Anthony Cuzo and also David Bohm. Stayed here. Yes. Oh, wonderful. All right. Um, and they completed the honors track with a capstone project. So what we get for that is oh, this is the highest honors thing. There's no okay. There's no separate thing for that. But um, <laughs> <laughs> did, did I mention this was my first time doing it? Um, but uh, but I would like to have a round of applause for both students. For So that leads us to the actual uh, graduation certificates, starting off with the highest honors in computer science. Um, so why don't you, you come up and I'll give you a certificate and we can shake hands and whatnot. So first is uh, Anthony Cuzo. Once again, thank you again. Honors track and, oh, this is uh, great. So David not only uh, completed the honors track and his bachelor's, but also a master's degree in uh, next year. And will next year complete a master's degree. <laughs> He's on that track. That's, it's, it's written in code. <laughs> but, um, but, but, but he did, did achieve highest honors in computer science in his graduating degree. All right. Next up is in honors in computer science, uh, a student who also got to have a class, Ching Ki Chow. He and Anthony in my honor seminar, would, whenever I was talking, they would go online instantly and find all kinds of supporting material um, that was relevant to what I was talking about, not just the latest cartoons. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, our next recipient, certificates sometimes. Well, that, they always made it look like they were coming up with pertinent material. It's possible they just kind of traded off. I'll look for pertinent material while you browse the web. <laughs> The, the, our next uh, certificate recipient for highest honors in computer science for Alexander B. Crowell. Crowell? Oh, and his mom is going to accept the certificate because he is actually uh, out of the country in Japan studying, let's say, computers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our next certificate, also high, highest honors in computer science for Michael Cullen. in computer science goes to Christopher P. Esco. Who is also an operator. Also an operator. All right. Honors in computer science to Harshil Shah. Harshil M. Shah. Sorry about it. Oh, who, who didn't know that he needed to sit here where his, where his little folder is. <laughs> Computer Science, William Todd. <laughs> Honors in Computer Science also go to Evan D. Wexler. Alright, and highest honors in Computer Science to Matthew J. Zucker. So, uh, okay, so now we go back. 
Oh, okay, yes, yes. Oh, but they don't get certificates. Okay, we'll also recognize the, the people who are graduating, but not with honors, uh, who have their, they get their degree, but they don't get a special certificate from the computer science department. Um, the ones with X's, I'm saying? Yes, the ones there. <laughs> I, I swear it's in code. Um, start here. All right, with Kung Sok Bay. Congratulations. I have nothing for you. Other than, other than my, my appreciation and congratulations. Um, Ian Carrigan, stand up. Daniel Farnsworth. Uh, oh, I got a, a phonetic on this one. Benjamin Ilmer. And his shirt says he's not a nerd, he's just dressed that way. <laughs> and we have, I practiced this one too, Bella Pilyavskaya. Outstanding. And last but not least, William Tamashunas. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, good, good, good. All right. So what's next on the flow here? It's going backwards. Oh, it's going to reanimate all those little uh, honor students, all students photos. So I guess, so I guess we're done. Um, please, you know, feel free to hang around for a little bit. Uh, we still have some food out front, and we have opportunities for pictures and just getting to know each other a little bit. And congratulations. I'm really, we're really proud of you guys. Like I said, anybody who wants to be on the web forever, uh, <laughs> as I, basically we're looking for representative parents, and most of you seem to fit the bill. And so we're hoping some of you will let us uh, photograph you and, and put you a smiling, happy you know, on the, the website. If not, we'll fix it. <laughs> yeah.